Hello, and thanks for joining us for this video case tip. I'm Bryn McBride of ABC for Health. Today, we're going to take a look at the new executive order on the Affordable Care Act that was just signed. It was signed on Inauguration Day on January 20th, one of the very first acts of the new president. What does it actually say? Well, it instructs the federal government to dismantle the Affordable Care Act to the maximum extent permitted by law. We're going to talk in a little bit more detail on what this means, but let's just go through a couple more of the sections of the executive order. It directs agencies to waive, defer, grant exemptions from, or delay any taxes or penalties, again, to the extent permitted by law. And it, it tells agencies to dismantle any provision that would impose a fiscal burden on any state. And this includes other costs, taxes, or penalties. So, the verbiage seems pretty harsh to dismantle the Affordable Care Act to the extent permitted by law. What does it actually do and what does that mean? Not very much. This is a lot of political statements about the Affordable Care Act without a lot of power to actually repeal the Affordable Care Act. It does signal the potential for future attacks on the individual mandate in very popular sections of the Affordable Care Act, but it doesn't have that effect. The executive order can revise things like rules and regulations around the law, but it can't dismantle the law itself. As you saw from the phrases we had on the previous slide, it, it, it's kind of confined to the extent of the way the law is written right now. There is some flexibility on what can happen within the law, but you can't go outside the bounds of the law. So the executive order looks like it's signaling there's changes to come, but the order itself does not make a whole lot of immediate changes. So here's another thing. The administration just can't start putting out new rules and regulations ASAP. There's a little flexibility to tweak some of the rules and regulations, but you have to go through what's called the Administrative Procedure Act. And this is an act that just establishes rules for notice and commenting. If you're going to go through the rulemaking process, you have to issue a notice that something's going to be changed. You then have to accept public comment. In some instances, you also have to hold public hearing and then have to revise the rule to take the public hearing and comment into account. So that is a longer term process. So even though the executive order was signed on day one, even if there are more changes to come, it wouldn't happen immediately. So what's next? What can we expect? Well, a whole lot more political discussion. And if this is the direction the administration wants to go, this direction signaling, we might want to start chipping away at the individual mandate. Experts already are starting to weigh in. What are their conclusion about what happens if you get rid of the individual mandate? Well, you're going to disrupt the insurance market. Some people go as far as to call it complete chaos of the insurance industry. And if that were to happen, you can expect there might be legal challenges. So we've got a lot of stuff up in the air. It was more of a political and ideological signal. It wasn't actually something that's going to start changing the law right away. You can read more about the executive order. You can read the whole order if you want. We have some links associated here. You can click on the information button and you can read all of these stories. The first link is the executive order itself. Then we gave you a couple articles that are really instructional, two from Vox and one from the New York Times that talk through the executive order, what it means, and they consulted with some healthcare and health policy experts as well to help explain that order. You can tell us your Affordable Care Act story. What would it mean if the individual mandate went away? What does the executive order mean to you? You can tell your story again by clicking on that information button and sending us an email or visiting our website at healthwatchwisconsin.org and telling us your healthcare story. Thanks for joining us.